Luganda what is community. Basi Luganda. You know different people have. Do you know when people say Abechi new meaning? Abo Molidano. I think community is generally, uh, generally a group of people living together in harmony, in peace, uh, being able to support each other. It means Ubuntu. In Luganda, that means to be human. It has a cultural connotation, which means you share your time and not just your money. It's our place where uh, people are gathered, you understand? People are living and gathered from, you understand? So if I say community, I think that's how I can define it. I mean, we're Africans, you know, and our families span wider than the nuclear family as we know it. So your community is your family. When we were growing up, they say we were raised by the community. In the 1970s, this uh, area was a dangerous place. Some of the children, my mother realized, were growing up in a horrible, horrible environment to bring up a child. There were broken families, half families, uh, families where parents are in prison and stuff like that. So they didn't have uh, an ideal upbringing. So she sought to put here a, a school that is based on the foundations of Christianity. There was this girl that had come from uh, one of the countries in the region and had been told the sex trade is booming in Uganda and she came to Uganda, uh, made some unfortunate situations, she was thrown out of a moving car, dragged on the tarmac and I think she was one of the girls who first responded to it. So we just came in, I think we responded as mums. We just came in with all the passion and uh, brought food, clothing, provided care, um, she was taken away, but a seed had been planted in our hearts and we felt these are the girls we want to look out for, these are the girls we want to respond to. I came to the hospital um, to see a patient and because I love music too much, I had, and I love dance, I, you know, music was being played in one of the wards and I figured if they let them listen to music that loud especially, they might let them dance. So. I went out on a whim, I wrote a letter to the administration asking to dance with the alcohol and drugs unit patients because I figured they pick up their vices from clubs, they listen to this music, they love to dance, so they will appreciate what I do more. Uh, we discovered that the arts sector, there was a very big gap and people with different abilities were not catered for and even those who have numerous closed doors like they might not have different abilities but they have challenges which lock them out of society. So I wanted to use art to bring them together so that they can show the world that they can also do what other people do and using art as an example because we believe art is a very powerful tool. If you talk about drug abuse, it's one of the biggest problems that we are facing here in Uganda, mostly with the youth. I was once a victim, whereby we were very many. My friends died. So I was like, you know what? If I don't change myself, then no one will change myself. And if, if, if I can use my, uh, my testimony to change, other to change other people, then let me do that so that at least I save um, my fellow youth from using drugs and aviation fuel uh, as well. In this community, the mothers that we have are single. Uh, it's hard for most of them. Uh, the foundation at least is uh, helping to, to pay for a few kids. We have, the foundation has about 300 kids, uh, but so far like 20 are going to school. So we identify these mothers and we support them where we can. The local leaders in the area, elected community leaders and so on, are very proud of this school because it has enforced discipline in the community. Some of the local leaders, elected leaders in this area, went through this school. 
the church itself uh, frequently visits this school and baptizes children here and takes them through the Christian uh, uh, sacraments and so on. You know, they, they're looking for information on mental health, on what they can do for their loved ones, how they can get them to come to the hospital, how to even start the conversation at home to say, I think my sister or my brother has a problem. And when the family has finally gotten around to talk about it, how do they bring that message to the sufferer and help them to you know, appreciate um, what they're going through, help the, the person who's suffering understand that the family is there for them, they love them, and they want to understand how to support them. When I was starting this, uh, the community wasn't uh, very happy about me because they were like, this boy, what are you doing? You are bringing, uh, you know, Bayaya, we, we always call it Bayaya in Uganda. You are bringing mad people here to start stealing our things, you understand? Because if you bring uh, those people around, people start to, uh, start to do what? To get scared. They are going to beat us. They are going to take out our phones. They are going to do what? You understand? But good enough, the community now is picking up. Because they have seen that I'm doing a good job. And um, they are also now happy because um, we no longer have criminals here. It's been a mixed uh, emotion when we go out to the communities. Some communities, are, they are willing to show us who the girls are, but they don't want to have anything to do with them because they feel they are naughty, they will spoil, you know that word in Uganda, they will spoil our children. We thought rehabilitation was going to be difficult, but reintegration is hard because the communities where most of the girls come from are as broken as they are. And until you work on their brokenness, sometimes they don't find it easy to receive back the girls. But yet other community members have been very, very, very helpful. I mean, it's the community that has given us accommodation. The people who have funded us really are our Ugandan community. Rahab Uganda is an organization that works with um, girls and women coming out of commercial sexual exploitation or what some people refer to as prostitution. We receive them or we reach out to them and then we rehabilitate them and reintegrate them back into their various communities. I am a licensed Zumba instructor. I am a, the proprietor of Soul Fitness, which is a dance uh, fitness studio, and Soul Foundation, which is an organization through which we do um, mental health advocacy. Um, I've been dancing, I've been doing Zumba for four years, and actually it's five years this year, and I have been dancing at Butavika Hospital for two years. At the Aliguma Foundation, we empower communities, more especially in the slums, the underprivileged, to have a better life using sports. Uh, my name is uh, Tereka Kenneth Desire. I'm a dancer, choreographer, artistic director of a Utah Dance Company and the founder and proprietor of uh, Unseen Dreams, an inclusive dance arts festival, uh, which supports and uh, gives dance skills to people with different abilities, uh, encouraging inclusion. So we use arts and other dance forms uh, to, to encourage different, differently abled people to be part of society in the arts mainly. Uh, Youth Poor Uganda is a non-profit organization registered um, in Uganda with the main purpose of um, creating a healthy generation free from illnesses and drugs. So St. Kizito Primary School was started in 1974 by uh, my late mother, Mrs. Bernadette Serunjoji. So she sought to put here a, a school that is based on the foundations of Christianity. And by that, she thought that the foundations of Christianity might be able to augment what the single parents, for example, are able to teach the children at home.
By the time the Aliguma Foundation, Mrs. Aliguma Rita, the CEO, got me, I had nothing at all and I had lost hope. But what, it, what she put in me was that I can get a heart of giving back and we can all hold someone's hand to put them where they are supposed to be. And she gave me the heart of loving one another and helping out. So my journey with Rahab has been very good, has, like has been very good because actually they transformed me into a very hardworking lady, a focused lady. Like it's so wonderful waking up in the morning when you have a dream that like, like I have a dream, I'm working for something, like it feels so good. And then as uh, the second thing, like how my life was on a turning point, it's like Rahab provided a job for me after my senior six. At Unseen Dreams, we have seen people who came and they thought that uh, they will never be anything else, that their dreams were shattered. And right now, they, they look forward to, like, when is the next Unseen Dreams? When is the next Unseen Dreams? We have, a, we have a young man who is blind. I met him in Salama School for the Handcuffed. And he was, he was a rapper, you know, like he does Luga Flow, but uh, he, felt he was a little bit timid, and then we gave him an opportunity and unseen dreams. Uh, just uh, last term, he called me and he told me, you know what, the other time I was still, I was still young. Now I have like seven hits. And he, I uh, spent like uh, seven minutes on phone trying to rhyme for me and you can see a development in, in him, yeah. We have, uh, we have young men who have gone to theater looking for skill now after like that, after seeing like, yeah, we can now looking for groups to join. Uh, for me, coming to Utabika is like I'm dancing for my, my own because in my family I have someone who has been to rehab because of alcohol. So when we come here, we learn how these people think, we learn how they feel about, you know, about what they've gone through. So we don't judge them. It has taught me not to judge. So I appreciate them the way they are, and I'm dedicated to support them because I know anyone can be here. I am, by the way, a product of this school. My mother had me and uh, she carried me along to this school because, uh, so I studied here. And here I am now, a PhD student, you know, many years later. And I am back to help and uh, continue with her work because uh, it's quite inspiring when you instruct tens of thousands of human beings and many of them become useful citizens. They become fathers, they become uh, mothers. And we can talk about 10,000 people, we can talk about 20,000 people. The statistics are important but that one individual life is important. So for us, our slogan is transforming lives one girl at a time. We have had girls that have come to the program and dropped out and gone back to these spaces, but they are our allies who keep telling the girls, that's, that's moms of Rahab have come, please go with them. They are good women. For us, that is impact. She's an ally. We don't understand what her other choices are, why she chose maybe to go back, why she didn't uh, stay and finish the program. But she's an ally. She's an ally who knows her life has been touched, her life has been transformed. So the way we create Impact at Rehab, we want to say that if a girl interfaces us even for, with us even for one day and one hour, we should have a deposit that they will remember. And one of our greatest deposits is love.